Okay, Mr. Cook here today. Today's lecture, we are going to get into Ohm's Law. This lecture supplements the reading online. Remember, the little green icon of the book means there's an ebook. The questions you will have at the end of the day will come from the reading, not from the lecture. So don't just get off on the lecture. Make sure you do the reading. Now, Ohm's Law is simply V equals IR, ver. This stands for voltage equals current multiplied by resistance. And we're going to break those apart. Now, a while ago, we made a very simple circuit. Actually, a couple of them. And we took a battery, which was our supply of voltage. We went, ran it through a switch, just because we wanted to be clever. And we ran that to a light bulb. And it comes back to the battery. For a simple circuit to work, it needs to have these three elements. We need to have our voltage, which is supplied by the battery. When we close our switch, that causes a current to run. And it runs through an object that provides the resistance. So for all simple circuits, and even more complicated circuits, we'll have our three elements, voltage, current, and resistance. And we're going to figure out how to calculate any of those if we know the other two. So the first element is voltage. Now, voltage Voltage is a form of potential energy. Potential energy. Energy. And it is often called an electro... Electricity motive motion. force. What is happening is in our battery or our supply, we have positive and negative ends. This is kind of a nice symbol for it. We have these little plates that are touching. What there is, there's potential. And as in the simple circuit, it wants to go through something and connect back to the other side. And how we put that resistance in there and the wires for it to travel, it's potential energy. There's a difference between the positive side and the negative side. So voltage is the potential energy, the storage. Many people, when they deal with electricity, they think of it as water. So your voltage would be your bucket containing water or your lake containing water, your big source. When we're dealing with it, in the formula, our symbol in the, is V for voltage. We measure it in volts. You should have seen that. We have a 10 volt battery, a 12 volt battery. Your wall is 120 volts. And the unit is once again the symbol V for volts. So if I have a certain value on the battery, it will be something like 10V for 10 volts. As we get going along, if we want to get more technical, we could have VDC for DC voltage or VAC. At this point, the DC or AC is not important in this first run. But do aware, 
the main thing is the V for voltage measured in volts. The next part we brought up is current. Current is the flow of electrons. All those little electrons want to scamper along the wire. They want to get in. They want to leave. Technically, we think of it as leaving the positive and coming back to the negative end. That works at this level of physics. So current is the flow of electrons. Flow of electrons. Where a lot of people get confused is the symbol is a capital I. Goes back to a Greek meaning of induction. But we use I for it in the formula. It's V equals IR. The I stands for current. It is measured in amps. And the symbol we will usually use is a capital A. So when I'm running something, it will be running at 10 amps. Or it may even be smaller. It may be 0.01 milliamps. But the A is always capitalized. So when we're writing the formula, the symbol for current is a capital I. When we are measuring current, we measure it in amps, and the symbol for that after the number will be an A. Current is simply how fast or how powerful those electrons are, how many of them are moving at the same time. Third element is resistance. Resistance is the force against it. If you're resisting something, you're pushing back. Back to the idea of water. If the voltage is the bucket or the lake full of it, the current would be the channel it's running through. Resistance would be when we modify the channel to cause it to move at a different speed. If you've ever played with a hose, you turn on your little hose, the water kind of dribbles out, you put your thumb on the end, and you can make it faster, a stream that pushes a little further. We're having the same voltage, However, by changing the resistance, we're changing that flow, making it faster or slower, letting more or less. That is what resistance does. So resistance is against can't even spell today against the electron flow. Resistance in the formula, our symbol is the capital R. So we get back to it, voltage equals IR, currents times resistance. Resistance is measured in ohms. OHMS, you hear a lot of meditation jokes. Ohm, ohm. That's the name of the professor who worked on it. The symbol for ohms is the Greek letter omega. However, we use the Greek letter omega but we don't pronounce it omega. We pronounce it ohms. So for resistance, I will have 10 ohms if I don't spell it out. So make sure you pronounce pronounce it as ohms. Now when you're solving it, we have our base formula. Our base formula is voltage equals resistance multiplied by 
Our current multiplied by resistance. V equals IR is the way people remember it. So I can rewrite this several ways. This is me solving for voltage. If I know my resistance and I know my voltage, I can also solve for current. So current I would simply equal voltage divided by resistance. Or if I know my current and my voltage, I could solve for resistance which would be my voltage divided by my R. That's the three variations we would have of Ohm's law. For people who like the triangle or the circle, we can do the V, IR, and the triangle circle. If you remember by covering what I want to solve for, I get it. If I cover V, I want to solve for V, I and R next to each other, I times R. If I want to solve for resistance, I would put V over I. If I cover I to solve for current, that would be V over R. Whichever one makes you happier, use it. At least write the three permeations out. Now, before I let you get to the reading and the quiz, let's look at a sample problem. This is the kind of problem you see in real life. You have a 12 volt stereo. Your car is 12 volts with 8 ohm speaker. Many speakers are 8 ohms. They tend to be 4, 8, and 16. The most popular one is 8. How many amps will the speaker draw? So let me write down what I know. I know my main formula. Voltage equals current times resistance. If I read my question, I have a 12 volt stereo. So I know my voltage equals 12, 12 volts. And I have an 8 ohm speaker. So I know my resistance equals 8 ohms. What I want to find is my current. So I could either plug these numbers in and solve, or if I remember from my cheat sheet, or if I'm good at math, I could rewrite my formula for my current equals my voltage divided by my resistance. If I plug in my numbers, my current will equal my 12 volts over my 8 ohms, my current would equal let's see, that would be 3 halves or 3 halves equals 1.5 and remember my unit for current is amps. So my answer would be 1.5 amps. So that's how you're going to do. We have our three variables, voltage, current, resistance. We know the different ways of writing them. Write down the formula you're using. Write down the numbers you know. You should be able to get through it fairly easy. Remember, you still need to do the reading. The questions come out of the reading, not out of the lecture. And then you have your quiz. Enjoy your day with Ohm's Law.